OK, so last class, or last video, rather, um, we were able to show that we are able to, once we had the matrices for the different symmetry operations uh, using the x, y, z basis, we were able to break it down into two different irreducible representations. So remember, this, these, are, these two rows that we got were our irreps. And I've sorted them by our three different classes of symmetry operations. You can prove to yourselves using similarity transforms that the two C3s are in the same class and the three sigma Vs are in the same class also. And then so the question was, is, are, are these two irreps all the irreps possible for the C3B point group? If that's true, then we can build up any basis set using these two irreps and then re represent all our symmetry operations that way as the sum of all these. But if it's not true, then we're missing one. right? We're missing one or two or however many that we need. Um, and then we can't build up all our basis sets. We'll be hampered. We'll be handicapped. So um, we want to have the character table, which is, this is a character table. When, once we have all the possible irreps, then we could build up any basis using these, however many there are. So what we're, what we're saying is that we are not able to find all the irreps using just x, y, and z. We might be missing one. So OK. Let's discuss the rules of a character table, which come from group theory. So the rules, and through them, we, can, we should be able to find any missing irreps. So the first rule is that the sum over all the i, I'll get to what those mean, is of chi i e, so this squared equals h. So h is the order of the group. And if you remember from our description of what a mathematical group was, the order is the number of total elements within the group. So for this C3B point group, we have one, two, three, four, five, six symmetry operations that are possible, even though we've grouped them into three different classes. But because there's a 2 here and a 3 here, our h equals 6. And then so uh, we're summing over i. So that what we're saying is we're summing over each possible irrep. So this is i equals 1, i equals 2. And then so chi i of e is the character under the e operation column. And that's the order. So if we're going to try to test out this rule, what we're saying is, so rule 1 is that the order under 1 squared plus 2 squared, because this is the order under this, the second row, plus 2 squared. And then this is going to be plus any missing row. So let's, let's call this kind of chi e of some other row of row 3 okay, squared. It's got to be equal to 6, because this is h. So overall, what this means is that 1 plus 4 plus question mark equals 6. So therefore, chi 3 equals 1. I should do that in yellow, actually. So what we know is that since this is 1, we can't be missing more than one row. So therefore, we know that there's a missing, missing row, which I'll kind of draw it in here. And so our missing element is 1. And then now we need to find out our question marks for the other two symmetry operations. And then so that for that, we'll need the other rules. OK, the second rule is, which I'll also do in pink, just to keep things consistent. Second rule, um, OK, and let, let me label this. This is the character for E. And then this is for all irreps, in case you missed the part I talked about. OK. So the second rule is if you sum over r, so over all operations, sorry, symmetry operations, that the character for one irrep when you sum over all the, so basically now we're going across. 
In this first rule, we were going down because we're summing over all EREPs. Here, we're summing over all operations, and we're going across the table rather than down. So the character for an R um, squared also equals H. So to test this out, let's first go across here. So let's do the first row. It's in blue. So what we're saying is the character, as we go across, so this is for our kind of our Z, gamma Z, right? We're saying the character for E is 1 squared plus the character for C3 squared. And this time, I'm going to multiply this by 2 because there's two C3s. So remember, we're summing over every single operation. So this C3 counts as two operations, even though they're in the same class. And then, lastly, we'll add 1 squared. And again, we'll multiply this by 3 because 3 is the coefficient, the number of sigma Vs. So times 3. And then, so does this equal 6? It does. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. So we're checking out that this uh, is indeed an irreducible representation, and it follows the rules for rule 2. We can do the same thing for gamma xy. So this is going to be, in this case, 2. So 2 squared. And again, the coefficient for e is 1, so times 1. And then, in this case, this is going to be minus 1 squared. Oops. And the coefficient for c3 is 2. So let me color code it to, just to keep things clear. And then lastly, we have 0 squared. Oops, I dropped it, times 3. So overall, this is going to be equal to 4 plus 2, which is going to be 6. So that checks out. So if we start thinking about what's happening here, we have to realize that in our unknowns, we have an x and a y. Let's call this x and y just for fun. So this is our kind of gamma missing, gamma question mark. So what we're saying is that 1 squared, so 1 squared times 1 plus x squared times 2 plus y squared times 3. And that's got to be equal to 6. So by, actually, by that logic, we now know that x squared and y squared both have to be 1, just because of how this works. Um, otherwise, because if x squared was 2, for example, we, we need whole numbers. So this means that x and y have got to be plus or minus 1. And so we don't know yet what they are, but we'll get to multiple rules. So OK. Our third rule is that when you sum up over all operations, again, summing up over all, so going across the row, um, if you take one ear up, the character under one ear up, you can multiply that by a different ear up, so chi i, chi j. So we're talking about two different rows, and then we're multiplying each element together and summing it up, and then this is equal to 0. So what this, what, what this is saying is that each ear up is orthogonal. Okay. Um, running out of room, let's get to just the, the fourth and fifth, fifth rules, and then we'll use this one to derive our missing uh, row in the character table. So the fourth row, sorry, the fourth rule. Um, so the characters of operations in the same class are the same. So chi of elements in the same class are the same. We've already talked about this. And this is the reason why we can group uh, the C3s together in the same column and the, and the sigma Vs the same way. Um, and then the fifth rule is the number of, of EREPs equals number of classes. And we've also kind of shown this already. So we've shown that we have three classes, which we knew from similarity transforms. So we must have three EREPs, which we've also shown from rule one. OK, so with these rules in hand, we can now derive our missing kind of x and y here. So I'll do it over here, however much room I have. So what we can do is if we were to, we know that this missing EREP 
gamma missing is got to be orthogonal to either one of these. So we can take either one of these and then multiply it out to figure out what our missing variables are. So let's do that. So again, we're summing across the row, but multiplying each element together. And then again, keep in mind, remember the coefficient is up here, because we're hiding two operations here, we're hiding three operations here. So let's do it. So first, what we're saying is that, so in the E column, right, so here we're doing one times, we already know this is one, so this is one times one, and then the coefficient of the E column times one is here. So right, this is the, these are our chi E of Z times chi E of the question mark row times one, because we have one E. Okay. Um, and then we're going to, we're adding across the row, so we're going plus, so the character of the Z EREP is one, and the character of the, the missing EREP for the C3 is unknown, we'll call this X. And then the coefficient of C3 is two because there's two C3s, so times two. And sorry, let me just draw a line because this is kind of running into each other. Okay, and then our last column is plus one times y times three, times three. And then we know that this has got to be all equal to zero because they're orthogonal. So uh, therefore, we now that, oh, sorry, um, give me one second, sorry, yes? Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. I'll cut this out of the video. Okay. Anyway, so now we know that 1 plus 2x plus 3y equals 0. And and there we have it. Okay. So we have this sort of uh, thing. And then so if you were to solve for this now, uh, we know that x and y are both plus or minus 1. So then we can then say that x equals 1 and then y equals minus 1. Um, you could also demonstrate this using the same rules for the, this, this xy EREP, 2 minus 1, 0. And um, uh, then you, would get, you should get the same result. So with that in mind, okay, so now we have our missing EREP, 1, 1, minus 1. And uh, so the reason we, we didn't find this before is because this does not match how x, y, or z transform in space. Um, this actually turns out to match how this missing operation R sub Z transforms. And what this is is a rotation about the Z axis. So you can imagine here, if we have our Z axis, if you imagine kind of like this imaginary like rotation arrow, and see how it transforms in space. So this is a one arrow, so it's an element of size one. So it's the same under E. If you rotate clockwise, C3 about the z-axis, you'll see that this arrow is still going to be pointing the same direction. So that's why it doesn't change. So it's a 1 under C3. But if we do a sigma v, so if you were to do some sort of mirror plane here, this arrow would then flip directions and it would have to become going, it would end up going to this direction about z, the z-axis. So because it's re totally reversed, it becomes a minus 1 character. So 1, 1, minus 1. So this would be the E rep corresponding to RZ. And then lastly, um, we'll talk a little bit more about this in class, but these are not kind of conveniently labeled as Z, RZ, XY. So they're what, what are called Mulliken symbols. And so these are uh, how we can kind of assign the symmetry. So 1, 1, 1 is what's called A1 symmetry. This 1, 1, minus 1 is called A2. And then 2, minus 1, 0 is We'll talk a little bit more about the rules uh, for where the Mulliken symbols come from in class specifically. Um, but suffice it to say, if your E operation has a 1, um, so it's order 1, then your Mulliken symbol is going to be an A or a B. If you have an E, it's going to be a 2 under the E um, symmetry operations. I know th these might look like they're, like they're confusing. They, these are different E's, so keep that in mind. Um, and then if in this column it says 3, it's a T. And we'll talk a bit more about the, what the ones, twos, primes, and g's mean later on in class.